Okay. Okay. Thanks, Ro thanks, Ronan. In this life, we live and learn because <laughs> I didn't know that I was held in such regard, but I'm quite pleased and thanks very much for those kind words. So today's talk is one-liners down the ages. That's our title. And our subtitle is, I think, therefore I think I am. There's something about one-liners. We all seem to love them. Parents, grandparents, teachers, people of influence use them to instruct those in their charge. They are good teaching tools. One-liners, they are all over the religious texts from the various religions. They pop up in history. In history, we may choose to recall, say, the French Revolution and the events leading up to it. A king lost his head. His dear queen followed suit shortly after. We will recall that executioners execute and then the poor souls are themselves executed. Yet, among the many things we recall about the French Revolution, a one-liner stands out. It captures the sentiments leading up to the French Revolution. And that one-liner, most of us will guess, is let them eat cake. The purpose of what I'm going to say, the purpose of these one-liners this evening is really to, to share thoughts. So comments um, are welcome afterwards. I've selected uh, 12 one-liners. Some of them I'll go through fairly rapidly Others I'll dwell on a little bit more for a little longer. Our first one liner, and can we put that up? The title up is All is Relative. What we are saying here is to locate any object in space, we need to relate it to something else be it uh, a line, a point, an object. It needs to be related to some other object. The same goes for ideas. We form ideas, but we, we cannot just float them. We need to relate them to some other idea. What we seem to be saying is nothing is absolute. We do not exist in a non-absolute sphere. Everything is relative. But there's a slight catch here because this statement, all is relative, seems to have a touch of the absolute. So let's modify it a little bit and say, we do say all is relative, but perhaps what we do mean is that we assume or we think all is relative, but we will go with all is relative. So all is relative is my one liner number one, and no doubt we'll come back to discuss that a little bit afterwards. One liner number two is for a cat, may look at the king. This in my view is what I refer to as the mighty leveler. It doesn't matter what the disparity is, 
there is always between people, between individuals, between entities, there is always some equal ground. The layman, quite justifiably, may sometimes question the learned. The apprentice may have a suggestion for his master. A cat may look at a king. That is the mighty level. And that's our one line and number two. One line and number three is in the beginning, God created, full stop. Those of us who are familiar with the uh, Christian text will recall that this is actually the first line of the Bible, but it does go on a bit longer than that. But I'm satisfied for this purpose and for the purpose of these one-liners to limit it to, in the beginning, God created. What appears, what, we, what happens here is it appears as though someone on high is saying, start here. Don't worry too much about what took place before this particular point. For your own good, for whatever reason, just start here. Don't concern yourself with what took place before. This stands in stark contrast to figuring out the origin of time, sorry, the origin of the universe and the beginning of time. Learned scientists will explain the Big Bang Theory and time zero. But the layman will forever ask, and before time zero, what? And um, at that point, we might even choose to recall that a cat may look at a king. We go on to one line and number four. One line and number four is, man shall not live by bread alone. Again, slightly on the religious side. And again, from the Christian Bible. The observation, this, this observation by sages of long ago seems to be saying man needs more than material. And by material, I don't just put it this way. Man shall not live by bread alone, but bread in this instance doesn't mean bread and food. It means the material um, necessities of life. So food, clothing, shelter. The sages of old seem to be saying, in addition to that, we need something spiritual. Man shall not live by it, bread alone. It appears as though we need to have balance to our existence. And later on, I'll mention the word balance again. Or one liner number five, and this is a little bit of a teaser because one liner number five is, I think, therefore I think I am. You'll spot right away, or most of us will spot right away that is that is a play on Descartes. Descartes, um, I think, therefore I am. Let's pause for a minute and examine 
Descartes, I think, therefore I am. What the second part is saying, I am. But again, as a cat may look at a king, the question might be asked, the apprentice might ask the master, are you sure? When you say I am, are you sure? Should it be modified slightly? Should you actually say, I think I am? Because if you say I am, it seems as though you're, you're not, you're transferring from, you're assuming some position of being absolute rather be, than uh, all things being relative, you're in the realms of the absolute. So should there be a slight modification? And could we say, I think, therefore, I think I am. So I'll leave that probably for further discussion later. I think, therefore, I think I am is my fifth one-liner. The card slightly modified. The sixth one-liner from the old to the part, from the old to the part, I find myself repeat, repeating this one line at time after time after time. And where it stemmed from, in my early days as a, as a student, as a civil engineering student and taking surveying, the lecture would come in and I don't know many, how many times in a single lecture he would say the same thing, from the whole to the part. And what he means is that if you're setting out a, a plot of land, say, just something manageable, say an acre, perhaps half an acre, perhaps two acres, but a manageable plot of land, say, to build a few houses or to put up a factory, what surveyors do, they set out the outline first. Then they deal with the details. So the outline would be a baseline and the whole perimeter. Then within those, the outline, there might be a pond, a river, trees, whatever. Then those are set out afterwards. So you go from the whole to the part. This uh, transfers itself into other settings. First of all, well, put it this way. In so many forms of planning in, in our daily life, we go from the old to the part. It might be planning our day. It might be writing a report. It might be undertaking a project. We consider the whole, then we go to the part. The complete picture, then details. Global, then local. General, then specific. From the whole to the part. My one-liner number seven is the vanishing point and the horizon will always be there. In our travels, the vanishing point and the horizon will always be with us. Mountains we may climb, oceans we may sail. Whatever our achievements, it does appear as though certain matters will forever remain beyond our gaze. Beyond our grasp, I beg your pardon. The vanishing point and the horizon will always be with us. The horizon 
promises good things. Say, come either. The vanishing point, visible, yet unreachable. We have encouragement and challenge. The horizon spurs us along. The vanishing point teases us forever. The vanishing point and the horizon will always be with us. One liner number eight is very simple. It is balance, balance, balance. Recall the teacher to his charges. Balance is nature's answer to everything. We've touched on balance before, remember? And we said man shall not live by bread alone. From the teacher again, every action demands an equal and opposite reaction. Otherwise, we accelerate away into a great spin. Look around, look around us. Balance is everywhere. Land and sea, storm and calm. Waves are everywhere. They indicate rise and fall. Balance to me is a beautiful word in the English language and nature's answer to everything. One line and number nine. Oh, it's not a peak, it's a ridge. Again, it's something both myself and my family repeat time after time. Oh, it's not a peak, it's, it's, not, a, it's not the peak. It's just another ridge. And this is born out of personal experience. Many, many years ago, when my family was young, we went for, we went hill climbing. Great day it was. Other families were there with us. And we were at the foot of this hill. We set out to climb, we set off. Part way up, everybody's getting a bit tired. We took stock, we looked up. And to our surprise, what we originally thought was the peak was not the peak at all. It was just a ridge, the peak was beyond. We continued. This happened further up, we looked up again. What we thought previously was the peak turned out not to be the peak again. So here we go, repeat. Oh, it's not, it's not the peak. It's not the peak. It's just another ridge. And we must have repeated that one liner three or four times going up the mountain. We eventually got to the top. It was a wonderful day, wonderful view, great sense of achievement. We felt good about ourselves. But what that experience taught us is that in our many tasks in life, we often underestimate what's ahead of us. There will be many false dawns, but if we persevere, we will conquer the peak. One interesting note here, and it's 
to do with perspective, how we view things. And I said to myself, if I were a taller person, the false peaks wouldn't have, be, wouldn't have been as many. If I were a shorter person, the false peaks would have been far more. Of course, tall here equates to knowledge. But um, I, my family, will always remember. Often in life, we set out and we have to say, oh, it's not the peak. It's just another ridge. One line and number 10. It's a teenage student's favorite. It's the equation of a straight line. We're dealing with one liners here. So we naturally bring in the equation of a straight line. Most of us will have to go back quite a bit, many, many years. But you may recall the equation of a straight line, typical form y equals mx plus c. And if you go back to those days, you'll recall too that teachers would advise transform any curvy chaotic relationship to look like the streamlined equation of a straight line. And you are well on your way to a solution. With that transformation, all becomes predictable. The equation of a straight line is a metaphor for many of life's experiences. What we are saying here is there is usually a way from twisting unpredictability to the straight and narrow. Success lies in finding the way. One line number 11, and this is my penultimate, my second to last, is very simple. It is, let us pray. I'm not suggesting that we go down on bending knees in penitence. After all, we're all good guys and not sinners. What I'm saying, there are times in life when we have planned, we have executed, boundaries have reached, we are probably exhausted. This may be a temporary condition, it may be permanent. What we are saying, we have reached a time where a position where it's time to reflect, time to plan ahead, perhaps time to hand over the button. Because at the moment, we have done our bit, we can and ought not to go further. It's at that time that we say, let us pray. My final, my twelfth and final one-liner is, and I quote, in my humble opinion, 
this is to me a beautiful phrase in my humble opinion. The more one speaks on any matter, the more of an authority one becomes on any subject, the more pertinent these words are, in my humble opinion. And I'll say, I'll say something else about this, and I'll say it very carefully. In my humble opinion, the conceiving, the conceiving of the whole universe in all its vastness lies within the five or six inches between our ears. In my humble opinion, all is subjective. My fr friends, these are my chosen, my 12 chosen one-liners for today. They will probably open little windows for discussions in a few minutes. But uh, finally, as parting as we as parting is such sweet sorrow, I will use one liners to make the closing a little bit easier. So I want to say thanks. Vaya con Dios. God be with you. And bear in mind that all is relative. And I think Therefore, I think I am. Thanks. Thank you.